Hello, squirrel friends. Welcome back to another Tuesday book review and eye makeup with Mondo. Today, I am going to be reviewing The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. This book was originally written in 1968. You see one of the covers from 20 years, when it was 20 years old. There is a graphic novel that you can find of it, which is really cool and super gorgeous. Girl, tell us what the book is about. It's about a unicorn. She is a very old queen. We are not gonna get into the age of that because that is not cool to tell a lady's age. She is minding her own business in her forest, keeping her little woodland creatures happy and safe, making sure that they learn a little bit of magic in their time of dealing with her. And she's a little weird. She's probably like a modern celebrity where she's very out of touch and has no idea of really like what's going on in the world other than just watching them being like, oh, they're cute and loves how they have a life and they have babies and they die, which she thinks is super strange because she's immortal. So she is living her life out there. And one day these weirdos come into her forest and they're trying to hunt her little friends and sh they go, girl, stay in your forest. You're the last one. She's like, mm, that's not true. I don't want to tell them. I mean, that's not true. There has to be other ones. I saw like, I saw George. I don't know when I saw George. And, and she's sitting there thinking and she's like, mm, maybe I am the last one. It seems like she's a little bit rash. She goes off and she's like, hmm, okay, well, um, I better go find the others. Just to make sure that they're alive, I better go find Felicia and the other ones. Just to like see how they doing. She wishes her forest friends well and takes off. And this makeup is kind of random, but it's inspired for my friend and yoga teacher, Laura. And she asked for something, me to do something with a little bit of neon colors. And I'm gonna do my best with the makeups I got. So back to the story. So she takes off and she's like, I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna go find Amy and Felicia and tell them, hey, girl, where have you been? People be saying you dead. On the way, she runs into different little farm people and none of them even know who she is. She's like a modern celebrity. She's just sitting there going like, oh, you don't know who I am? She like almost kills one dude just because she's like, mm. You don't even know who I am, girl. Why do you, how do you not know me? Cause he calls her like a mare and she gets all offended by that which I think is hilarious if you think about it. Like she gets like, after you get older, that's hilarious. She thinks she's all offended by being called a mare. I'm like, what's wrong with horses? And then she comes along this little butterfly and he's like, girl, you know where the other unicorns are? King Hagrid has them, didn't you know? He like sent this big bull thing and this thing came and got them and was like, mm, you need to come back with me. And she's like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I missed the memo. So you know, she's kind of like feeling like Mindy Kaling is like, is everybody hanging out without me? Well, apparently they are. They hanging out without you, girl. Well, if you can call force imprisonment hanging out with, without you. So she takes off and she heads to where this King Hagrid person is. She's being, again, reckless, not really paying attention to her surroundings. And she, some witch, comes across her in the middle of the night and is like, I know who that girl is. I know who she is and goes, I want her for my circus. And she has a little bumbling magician with her. And he's like, girl, do you know what that is? Girl, that's a unicorn. And she's like, I know, stupid. She's like, I might pretend I'm like a charlatan, but I'm not. And he's like, oh, good okay, fool me. They abduct her while she's asleep. They put a sleeping spell on her, the unicorn. And she gets put in a cage. And then when she wakes up, she's like, oh, uh, I should have been more careful. And she realizes this lady don't even know what she's doing. Well, she thinks that because she's like arrogant, you know, it's a it's a good book. I love this book. I may be making like light of everything, but it is a really good book and I've loved it my whole life. So just take that I'm being funny because that's just how I am. So back to the story. So girl realizes that she's in this like circus with these creatures. And then there, she's like saying, oh, this like ancient looking boa constrictor is the Midgod serpent. Mm-hmm. So then she decides that she's gonna enlist the help of Smendrick, the magician, to bust her butt out. 
But then he says, hey, you owe me. And she's like, what do you want? She's like, I can't make you a religious. And he's like, no, nah, that's okay. And she's like, he's like, I just want to come with you. Like, can I just come with you? And she's like, oh, all right. And they go on this grand adventure. And he's like, I know where King Hagrid's castle is. And she's like, oh, well, I would just kind of bumble it around in the dark, hoping that somebody would just tell me. And then look at you, you came around and told me, see? I knew it. And girl, I seem like I'm giving away the whole story, but I'm not, I'm not. Calm down. So they end up going through all kinds of tribula trials and tribulations with themselves. There's all these people that think like Smendrick's nuts. Like he kind of says like, I'm a magician. And they're like, uh-huh, sure kid. You're led to believe that he's a lot older than he is and that he just looks really young? I don't know. I kind of believe that. Both, then Smendrick gets abducted by bandits. Girls can't keep themselves out of trouble, I swear. So they get abducted by bandits and the unicorn's like, well, great, now I have to rescue him. Or I could leave him. She's kind of like a cat, you know? She's like, hmm, I could leave him. Solve one of my problems. I don't have to, I already know where this King Henry is now because he told me. So I could just leave him in the dust. But I think she's grown a little bit of a conscience during this time because unicorns aren't supposed to have like regret and consciences or something like that. She goes and rescues him. And that's where they meet Molly Grew. They meet her and she gets all mad at the unicorn. She's like, girl, where were you when I was young? She's like, mm. The unicorn's like, I was keeping myself busy, obviously, because I didn't even know my own people disappeared. Molly's like, hmm, so you kind of like ran off everybody in my group, so can I come with you guys? And they're like, no. But then the unicorn kind of feels bad that she's like never, she apparently no unicorn ever came to her. So then she feels kind of bad about that. So she's like, hmm. I guess we should take the hoe. So let, let, let's take her. What, what could happen? And Spender's so mad because he was like, oh, the unicorn is supposed to be my best friend. You know, when our best friend gets a best friend, another best friend, and you're like, oh, rude. They make their way to King Haggard's castle. So it's all run down. It's barely, it's on the ocean. Apparently some witch was like, he paid some witch to like make it for him, but then was like Trumpy and went all Trump on her and went, mm, not gonna pay you. So then she was like, well, then I'm just gonna pay you back with a curse. I'm gonna put my eyeliner on, I'll be back. And I'm back. I know, isn't that surprising? I can do make, I can do eyeliner that quickly, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. They have to realize that King Haggard has a demon bull working for him. The Red Bull. So the Red Bull's like, mm-mm. I hear you guys coming. Nope. And so he's out there trying to get him. I made so much light of this book. Like I think in this review, like it really wasn't that funny. And it's not funny. I told it in a way that probably is gonna get you to remember the book. Hmm. Once they find King Hagrid's castle, things have changed. Things have changed. People have changed. Realizations have happened. People have grown up in this journey, especially the unicorn and Smendrick. Molly's pretty much that person that's always in there going, mm-hmm, told you. Nobody listened to me. So I love Molly. I think Molly is so cool. You don't really like Smendrick at first because you think he's just kind of like this little know-it-all weirdo that's like, yeah, I'm a, ma I'm a magician. You're like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's awesome, I think. Once you get to know him and you start liking him a lot. So the rest of the book is about their biggest journey, which is being, ha finding Hagrid. What, like Hagrid, what do you, oh, Hagrid, oh my God, like we're in Harry Potter or something. Would that be a twist? Oh my God, there's Hagrid. No. How are they gonna get these unicorns back? Where are they? Does he just have them in a herd somewhere? Why is he keeping these unicorns? Cause obviously this woman can like, this one can keep herself just fine. So why does she need, well, how is he keeping like everybody else in the population? And then like part of the time, like the unicorn's like, do I ever wanna do this? Is this worth it? I don't know. Um, so she comes through some very big life decisions. I think this book teaches you a lot about what compassion is, what it's like to love other people and put be beyond yourself. The book is in a fantastical light of being with magic and unicorns and a dragon that's a bull, but pretty much a dragon because he's on fire. Learning to overcome your fears and conquer them and become this better, bigger you and that's more invincible for the world. I need a blend right here. So that's what the book is about. And it's a fantastic book if you've ever, ever, ever loved unicorns. 
if you've ever loved magic and stuff like that, that's this is the book for you. You need to read this book. It's a good book for beginning readers too, like beginning readers that are advanced. So if you have a young reader that's going through books really, really quickly and needs something that's gonna challenge them, but isn't gonna have like the graphic, maybe sexual or super violent books of adult or have the adult content, then this book is perfect for you, for that child. Because it doesn't talk about anything that you wouldn't talk about in a cartoon. It is a cartoon. It's an animated movie from the 80s. Fantastic, it stays very true to the book. Just a, an abridged version of the book. It's very good. If you've read this book and want something similar, he has another book called Summerland that's been out recently. That's really cool. It's about um, Persephone. Persephone escapes Hades and kind of wreaks havoc in the Pacific Northwest. But there really isn't anything similar to The Last Unicorn. There's things on the same line, like unicorns and things like that, but there's really nothing like it. This book is a standalone. It is so much just itself. An amazing book. If you've never read this book, it's not even big. Like, it's not a big book. You could read this in two days. Like, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it will change your life. It's such an amazing book. I hope you all give this book a read. If you do, talk about it in the comments. I would love to hear about this. Hear what you think. Love it. Um, if you are enjoying the music you're listening to, it's me. I'm playing this. I've layered all the parts and made a flute orchestra with just me. I'm playing all the different parts from bass flute all the way to piccolo. Um, if you want mp3s of them, I have them. Just email me. I will get you one because I don't have them anywhere to sell, but I don't really care about selling them. I just want to make music. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night. As always, thank you guys. If you love makeup and books, subscribe, subscribe. Um, I will be putting these out every Tuesday. Have a great day. Be kind to others. Wear your mask.